Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and Module 5 on Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. This is video number 5, looking at an, a slightly more deeper analysis of chemical equilibria. So what we want to try and do now is see if we can link these ideas of collision theory and reaction rate in order to um, help us understand what's going on in an equilibrium system. So firstly, let's just recall that definition of um, a collision theory, which is that for a reaction to occur, particles must collide with sufficient energy to break the bonds and have the appropriate orientation to allow the new bonds to form. So this is about sufficient energy and appropriate orientation. And we'll look at appropriate orientation a little bit later uh, in a, in a uh, subsequent video but for the moment I want to concentrate on the idea of sufficient energy so we know that sufficient energy is equivalent to the energy of activation okay so that's one of the things that we've looked at from our year 11 course we know that the energy of activation is the um, difference between where the reactants are and the top of this um, energy hill. So that represents our energy of activation. Now, of course, now that we're looking at uh, reversible reactions or reactions where an equilibrium is established, we need also realize that the reaction path doesn't just go in a single direction, but can also go in the opposite direction. And of course, in the opposite direction, the energy of activation for a reaction here, which is endothermic that is the reactants are at a uh, the product sorry are at a higher energy level than the reactants uh, then we have an endothermic reaction and notice that as we go back from the um, direction in the direction of y to x so we're going in the reverse direction the energy of activation is now much smaller so for the endothermic reaction, we have a smaller Ea. Now this is always the case, because when we go from Y to X, uh, this is an exothermic reaction. And so therefore now the uh, what was the reactant is now the product, and it's at a lower energy level. So therefore energy must have been released. These energy diagrams show us the relationship between something which is endothermic in the forward direction, then becoming exothermic in the reverse direction. And you can see the difference between the activation energies in each of these cases. But what does this mean, or what is the relationship between this, this idea and collision theory? Well, here's a little graphic, and um, you'll see quite a number of these. In fact, this is a great tool for us to analyze systems in equilibrium. Because when we look at this in terms of the um, time, the, so the reaction proceeding, we can see what's going on here. So initially, we have uh, no ammonia in this case. We have one mole per liter of nitrogen and three moles per liter of hydrogen. If we were to write this uh, process down, hydrogen gas plus nitrogen gas, and this time it's an equilibrium, so I'm going to use the double headed arrow to ammonia, which is also a gas. Uh, I need to balance this, so a two there and a three there will balance it. So therefore, if I start with, uh, if I look at my mole ratio of 3 to 1 to 2, then what I should have in a completion reaction is the 3 moles of hydrogen and the 1 mole of nitrogen should all be used up and I should end up with 2 moles of uh, ammonia. The 2 moles is here. Okay, so this should be here, but it isn't. And that's telling us that this is an equilibrium, not a completion. Because at some point, in uh, initially we have a high um, ratio of reactants. Therefore, we have uh, an, a high rate of collision. 
and therefore um, presumably we also have a reasonably high rate of uh, particles whose energy is greater than the energy of activation and therefore they will react but as they react the concentration drops and we start to increase in the number of um, ammonia molecules and because two ammonia molecules running into each other will actually reform the hydrogen and nitrogen this will start to occur so we will we will start with only the forward reaction occurring but as the concentration of the um, NH3 uh, starts to increase then we will start to have the reverse reaction starting to occur as well until it reaches a point where these lines are horizontal and of course horizontal lines are an indicator of equilibrium so you can find the point where the equilibrium is first established by finding the point where as the reaction rates get slower and slower eventually they will reach a point where they are at a consistent rate um, and uh, there's no more change in the macroscopic properties of the system this is how we we use our understanding of collision theory of particles bouncing into each other um, creating chemical reactions uh, and the fact that this occurs not just between the particles of the reactants but also the particles of the products until the rate of both the forward and reverse reactions are identical and then we have equilibrium notice also from this diagram that equilibrium does not mean equal amounts of the hydrogen the nitrogen or the ammonia all we have is a horizontal line representing that the rates are the same and therefore there's no further change in the uh, concentration of each of these species thanks for watching